Woo! L to the D to the B to the WMMAC. This is your boy, the coach. You're live, live, live on the coach. You show the coach. You show live. Man. Woo! It's been a while. I feel like I ain't talked to the WMMA universe in a minute. But I'll be back on tonight to talk to y'all. The coach is just working and working and working and working and working. All right, folks. Chris Cyborg has again called out Kat Zingano. And Chris is alluding, you know, by the post that she put out on Twitter. Uh, she's pretty much alluding that her and Kat Zingano are going to be next. Okay, now, this is the thing, okay? And I'm going I'm to talk about the good and the bad. I'm going to talk about the good and the bad in this fight. Okay, this is a fight that should have happened maybe two or three years ago. Should have happened. Um, Kat Zingano was talking a gang of, I'm talking about she was talking a gang of, sh she's talking a gang of it. And she was talking about what she do to Chris Cyborg. <clears throat> Chris Cyborg, not a better wrestler than me. When I take Chris Cyborg to the ground, it's over. You know, Chris won't be able to do anything because... You know, I'm just I'm just so good. I can do this, and I'm not afraid of Chris. So this, this is all Kat Zingano, okay? This is all Kat. And so, you know, now Kat Zingano makes it to Bellator, okay? Gets to Bellator. She beats Gabrielle Holloway, and Chris Cyborg said, okay, all right, it's time to do this. Let's go ahead and do this. Kat Zingano was like, eh, no. I need another fight before we fight. And so, you know, Chris was like, cool, you know. Uh, I need to box. I got to defend my belt against Blinko. Okay, cool. So, you know, Chris do her thing. Kat Zingano takes another tune-up fight. And I forgot who she fought, but it, it was somebody who, uh, gosh, man. Gosh, I mean, she just picked somebody. She picked the person. And, you know, in MMA, tune-up fights can go very, very wrong. Um, it's not like boxing. Like, I don't believe in MMA tune-ups, okay? Because you can get somebody you think is a tune-up in MMA, and they end up beating you. And I've seen that happen a whole lot of times, where a fighter, you know, taking a soft touch, or they think it's a soft touch, and that fighter, oh, I got a sneeze. Oh, no. So, <laughs> oh, my God. I sneezed, y'all. I sneezed in the damn phone. I sneezed. All right. Must be allergic to some virgins on here or something. I, 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 I don't know. Um, but anyway, now seriously, you know, we're going to get back to seriousness. Um, so Kat has made many excuses. Now let's flip the coin because Kayla Harrison is ridiculing this. Okay. She's ridiculing this and saying, you know, look, you avoided me, you know, in a boxing bout. Okay. You avoided me. Okay. You avoided me to go fight a no name in box. Now you're going to avoid me to fight Kat Zingano. And Kayla was like, well, okay, who pays more? Okay to fight, you know, a low-level boxing match and to fight Kat Zingano or one fight with me. Now, that's a serious question by Kayla Harrison. It's very serious, okay? But Kayla put it out there. She put it out there, and, you know, we, we have to speak on that. Okay, so Kayla Harrison is proposing that Chris Cyborg can take a $3 million fight with her. Now, you know, not $3 million just to fight Kayla, but, you know, $1 million just to get in the ring with Kayla. And a $2 million prize to the winner. Okay, we know this because it's pretty much already been confirmed by some Bellator. I mean, not Bellator, but uh, PFL execs. Okay, Chris Cyborg is her. She's come out and she said, listen, I'll fight Kayla Harrison, but, you know, Kayla going to have to do it in, in, in Bellator. And the reason for this is Chris is saying that, hey, um, I don't want to split the money. Okay, I, I don't want to split the money. Uh, we can make more money if it's in one organization. You know, and here's my thoughts on that, okay? I understand that Chris want to make more money. But if there's a certain dollar value, okay, that they can pay you, I'm thinking, you know, why, why does it even matter, you know, who does what? Because Scott Coker was pretty much on board with, hey, whatever we need to do to make the fight. That's, that's his statement. Whatever we need to do to make the fight. Okay, whatever we got to do to make the fight, let's make the fight happen. Okay, that's Scott Coker's mindset. Now, that's what I love about Scott Coker. Now, I got some things I don't like about him, but I do love that mindset where, okay, we just want to make the fight happen. That's it. That's our goal. Um, but I guess if they can agree on a dollar value, I don't I don't see why. And maybe, maybe that's something I'm missing, okay? Maybe there is something that I'm completely missing. Okay, if they can agree on a dollar value, they can agree on the back-end money, pay-per-views, and all this other stuff. 
then, you know, my thoughts is why should it matter? But I'm not in that negotiating room. Neither are you. Okay? I'm not in the negotiating room and neither are you. Okay? I don't understand all the wind, all the workings, the inner workings of what else could go wrong. Okay? So I don't I don't come out and say, you know, hey, do this, do this, do this. I'm just I'm asking a question. I'm posing a question. Okay? But with that being said, one of one or two things are gonna have to happen. Either Kayla Harrison is gonna have to go to Bellator or Chris Cyborg is gonna have to go to the PFL. Okay, now which one is it? Okay, which one is it? Who's gonna do what? Who's gonna do what? Okay, somebody gotta move. Okay, somebody's gonna have to make a move to make this fight happen, but Chris Cyborg or Kayla Harrison, they have to fight each other. We can no longer say that, you know, Kayla Harrison is just running her mouth. Okay, which she is, and of course Kayla Harrison ain't fought no tough competition. But Kayla Harrison been running her mouth for the last like four or five years. Okay, she's done absolutely hardly anything in the sport of MMA, not much, but she's been running her mouth. Okay, I'm talking about this woman been talking trash for the last four years, saying that you know Amanda Nunes and Chris Cyborg, all these Brazilians are afraid of her and they don't want to fight her because they know what'll happen to them. I mean, this is what she's saying. Okay. And, you know, Kayla has had a couple of opportunities. And, and Chris Cyborg and Amanda Nunez's defense, Kayla has had opportunities to make this fight happen. I mean, she could have fought. She actually could have went to the UFC when Amanda Nunez and Chris Cyborg were both there. She had an opportunity, but she turned it down. She turned it down to go to the PFL because Dana White made a play for Kayla Harrison early, 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 early. She said no. So, I mean, what do you do? Because you can't sit here and run your mouth and then you have an opportunity to go fight before the PFL was ever in the picture. And then you say no. <laughs> I mean, okay, so what, what's the excuse? Because Dana White, I mean, knowing Dana, he would have let you get a couple of fights. I mean, I've never known the UFC to push talent too early. The only person that they did that to, that I really see, they did it, they did it to Megan Anderson. They pushed Megan Anderson too fast. And they push Sage Northcutt. That's who they really, really push too fast. Like they put them in positions and Paulo cost them. Okay, but on the most part, you know, they got a roster of a lot of fighters. And most of those people, they're fighting. They're fighting who they're supposed to fight. And they're working their way to the belt. Okay, the UFC don't have a history of that. I'm pretty sure that, you know, they would have gave Kayla at least, you know, a couple of fights. You know, two, three fights, four at the most. They probably would have done that. I'm pretty sure they would have. And then have a showdown against Amanda Nunez or Chris Cyborg. You see, Kayla didn't want the work. She didn't want that work. Now she's 14 fights in. She done fought 14, 12 of those 14 uh, wins, okay, were, well, I say 11 of those 14 wins were against opponents who, they're strikers. Like, these people don't have a concept of what wrestling or what jiu-jitsu or anything is. But that's who they're putting, that's who they're putting her against. And this is the advantage that she gets by being in the PFL. These are quick, predictable victories that she can make a, a, a crap totem, a crap load of money for. Just to go in there and fight these people who she'll just dominate. Kayla Harrison didn't want to have to go to the UFC and actually have to do the work. So now she's saying, well, everybody running. Well, no, they're not running. You just didn't, you know, actually go to the UFC in, in the first place. I mean, that's what happened. And if we, we really want to be real, that's what it is. So now at this point, you know, Chris Cyborg, and I don't even say Amanda Nunes for this point, if they're going to fight you, okay, because you, you you had an opportunity, you had a chance to go, it's going to be worth their while. And they want to maximize all the money that they can get, okay? This is what I'm reading into it, okay? That's what I'm reading into it. Now, we know that Dana White, he's not going to do any kind of cross promotion. He's not going to do it. So get that out of your head. Scott Coker is open-minded, okay? He would do it. He would do it, but Chris Cyborg don't even want to entertain that. So, I mean, we're at a stalemate. So, somebody got to move. Somebody got to move. Who is it going to be? I mean, both of them could make a, 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 a promotional change. They could. It's not like they couldn't do it. <laughs> but, you know, just think if Chris say, hey, Scott, I want to go to uh, the PFL for one fight and then come back to Bellator. Well, I, he's not going to go for that either. That's stupid. Because his biggest star, Chris Cyborg, <laughs> He can't even profit and make money off of that fight. No, he ain't going to do that. And the PFL, they ain't going to let Kayla Harrison go off 
uh, to the damn, uh, to, to Bellator to fight one fight in Bellator. They ain't finna do that. They ain't finna do that, and, and they can't profit off the mega fight. No. So, somebody gotta go. Who? Who's gonna go? Who do you guys think need to go? We'll talk about it more tonight.